Fruit of Innocence and Decadence with the filmgoers of York in Movie Watch. First, Channel 4 hacks into the world of information technology on the wild side. Symbols of teenage rebellion. Can I speak to you, Stuart Cosgrove, please? My name's Brandon Stuart Secretary. Can I ask what it's in connection with? Um, I believe he was um, wishing to contact some hackers uh, in association with some uh, documentary or something. Right, OK. Can you hold on to me? Yeah, please? sure. Watch the sky. Keep looking. Watch the sky. Keep looking. Keep looking. Tell this to everybody, wherever they are. I'm 16. Um, I started hacking when I was 14, and other activities when I was 14 and a half. So, uh, are you freaking and carding and what have you? It's uh, double life, you know. You know like you've got your computer life, and then you've got your standard life. And standard life's like uh, hop on the bus to go 20 miles down the road. Yeah, you know this uh, extra life. You want to put it? It's like you know tapping a few keys, and you're like miles away in the states somewhere. You know, it just tends to shrink the world a little bit. I'm absolutely an information junk. I mean, we've got the FBI here, and um, a bit lower down, we've got the uh, CIA, and some more dial-ups for the, for the CIA. My first source of information was a, a, a very good friend of mine who got me interested in uh, in hacking and, and, and especially phone freaking to begin with. But from there on, it's more it's more. Um, you get out there and you do it yourself because that's the quickest way to learn. And also, a lot of people won't actually tell you things because they want to keep it to themselves. So you, by asking people, they won't necessarily give you correct information anyway. So the only way you can ever be sure is to get out there and do it yourself. It's uh, a giant you know, interlinking adventure game. Like, if you leave out, it's going to go on without you. So you've got to keep up with it or uh, you're just going to get left behind. Well, hacking for me is, is, is getting the information that I want, uh, which doesn't necessarily, um, well, a lot of people don't agree with uh, the information that we're allowed to get our hands on, uh, basically because there is no freedom of information in this country, unlike in the United States. So sometimes you have to break the law to get the information you want, otherwise nobody would learn. Cheers. I'm going to call up uh, military systems. Air Force Command Center. We just enter the address and it'll, it, it dials the, uh, the number that you type for you. I'm just waiting for the connection to be made. No, connect. Yeah, welcome to the military airspace management system. Basically, we just managed to get full proofs on it within a couple of minutes, which doesn't exactly do much for security nowadays. That was just a basic, basic hack of a military system. Some hackers do it for, for the power which you can get when, when you've uh, taken over a system. Some do it for money. Some try and do it to rip off a bank. Some try and crash military systems because they're anarchists. 
the list is endless. All information that, that had A being stored on paper is now on computer. Your bank details, your poll tax, your council tax, your TV license, your driving license. Basically, everything in your life is on computer somewhere. Information is power, knowledge is power. So this is uh, InfoCheck, which is a very, very big um, credit checking system. It allows you to check uh, uh, companies um, in, in the UK. We could do a, do a check on uh, Channel 4. You want to run a check? One. You're expected to pay for all this. Um, they charge you um, for, e for each search that you make. Pre-tax profits stood at £1.2 million in uh, 91, and they reckon that uh, the company is of sufficient financial stability to undertake a contract of up to £30 million. Hackers um, don't attack individuals as such unless they have motive to do so, i.e. previous bad experience, but corporations, the ones who tend to like to screw people, uh, they're the ones who you really target at to see how they work, just to uh, highlight their security flaws to show that they're not like the great you know, super you know, corporations that people like to believe they are. They are actually vulnerable. This is just we'll logging onto Brookhaven National Laboratory's National Nuclear Data Center, which is just a machine with um, information on uh, nuclear research, basically. There's also uh, some space defense initiative uh, information. Um, this account just, just, just allows you to uh, look around and get any information you want, basically. Under the present laws, I mean, everything I do is completely illegal. But um, I don't cause any harm to anybody. I don't damage any systems. Um, I access information which is available on that system. doesn't necessarily mean I've got the right to view it. But um, to be honest, if, if, if they're stupid enough to let me get in, and there's absolutely no reason why I should, um, then they have no right to keep that information to themselves. If they want to keep their information secret, put it in a safe. But then somebody probably come along and uh, hack the safe as well. If you didn't have hackers, yeah, you'd have every corporation running rings around the public and they'd never know about it. You'd be uh, charged extortionate credit rates, you'd be you know, charged everything, yeah, and they'd have you believe they were invincible and totally secure. That just isn't the case. I mean, um, Robin Hood, our classic one, he took from the rich, yeah, gave to the poor. All we're doing is taking from the corporations, yeah, and just putting it back where it belongs, so, in public knowledge, not behind closed security systems. The other skills that go hand in hand really with hacking is phone freaking, which is basically using the phone system to obtain uh, free, free calls um, around the world. Not that free calls is, is the main priority, playing with the phone system is, is the, a joy in itself, which is just another computer system. So by playing with one computer system, it, the, the phone aids your hacking by uh, being allowed to go all over the world without having to run up a huge phone bill. There is no way that the, the average hacker and freaker could afford to pay for the calls. And also, it's against a lot of hackers and freakers' principles to pay for phone calls, as it's seen that British Telecom and other phone companies are uh, big rip-off merchants. So even if you could afford to pay for your phone calls, you wouldn't out of principle. It's uh, known as blue boxing. Uh, it's basically calling out to an operator's equipment, sending down a phone, seizes that equipment, and then you play a series of other tones like you would an ordinary keypad and that puts your call through. And uh, that gets charged to the operator's equipment, not your home phone. Right. Kick us off. OK, the first thing we have to do is get an outside line. Then we dial an 800 number. And what we're going to do is we're going to send some tones down the line which tell a trunk 
to go on and off hook, which means we're going to connect to a trunk. And we're going to call from the trunk, which is in Hong Kong, over to America, connect with another phone system, enter our ID, go. And now we're calling back to the UK from America onto um, a British telecom data line so we can get onto the internet. And from the internet, we can just go to anywhere in the world. most basic setup you'll ever see for phone freaking from a, from a pay phone anyway. What we've got is a very, very old tape recorder and a pair of very cheap <coughs> that you could just buy from Dixon's. Um, now the phone itself, the pay phone's proving very, very difficult to use, especially since we're, uh, one of the lines that we were trying to call off, the operator now knows that we're trying to call off it. And um, what's happened is that either they've turned a filter on on the line to prevent us from sending our tones down or, um, or it's our fault. We're not quite sure at the moment. But we'll keep on trying anyway. Uh, hello, um, I'm sorry, this is British Telecom. Um, we're just trying to sort out some engineering tests, so if you'd like to hold a moment, please. I'm um, sorry, can I call you back in a moment, please? Yes, please. Thank you. Right. I've been traced before. The first time I was ever traced was from Buckingham Palace when I found a direct dial-up for Buckingham Palace. And um, I had too much to drink one night and thought I'd have a chat with the Queen, but it didn't go down too well. Um, <laughs> that was my first call that was ever traced. And I've, had, I've been traced across networks as well from uh, the other side of the world. But uh, it's, it's very easy to, uh, to, to uh, get past that. It takes a lot of time and you have a lot of time in the lead before they get anywhere close to you. After boxing off old uh, Hawaiian Bell, uh, we got through to uh, some joke line in Canada, Toronto. What's this? Hi, you reached dial up oh, line. joke line, I don't think so. <laughs> Sexy Sue, uh, yeah, these are like uh, the third lines that cost you about five dollars a minute. Normally if you pay them, they're like international 0898 numbers. But uh, if you box the call, it goes away for nothing, so I mean, you know. Bingo. Thank you for calling the 9000 connection. The adult chat line. It's just a laugh. You know, in the information centre of Fort Leavenworth in Kansas, yeah. From here, yeah, you've got access to uh, basically all these military machines here. Uh, you've got the Pentagon network, Fort Knox, uh, these are all Fort Bragg, Fort Irwin, uh, Dixie, Lee, all that lot, yeah? I'll just show you uh, Fort Knox briefly. Fort Knox, home of armour. BBS uh, is a bulletin board system. Um, it's just basically an online private or public system. Uh, from there you can obtain uh, mail, like electronic mail services, um, download files, upload files. It's just like a small network community of individual uh, computer communications enthusiasts. <laughs> the information you could get up there, you, well, any subject that you could be at all interested in, every niche is catered for. It's somewhere. You know, obviously, the job is to find it. There's a uh, bulletin board in uh, Germany. That sort of shit. There's a couple in America as well. Computer porns, that's like, uh, I mean, originally it's a joke. Yeah, and then you get people uh, like the typical little school kids, yeah, you know, the little spotty weeks who sit in the corner all day. Not hackers, fucking wares dudes. Wares dudes love that sort of thing. You know. People scanning the 
the images from, uh, I don't know, either from video or from uh, magazines. And um, what they do is, once they're stored as, as files, they can be transmitted across the world or, or, um, or whatever. You can do whatever you want with it. A bit popular on the old modems, you know. That's why people buy them. It's a BBS in the States called FKX2, yeah. Right, each of these is like uh, 25 files each time I flick through. And you're looking at thousands and thousands of these files. This guy charges $79 a month for access to it, doesn't it? You know, practically every BBS system's got a few on there. There's absolutely no way that this would happen in the UK. I mean, if the police found out about it, that it would be shut down before it even happened. We're at the Hactic conference, the Hacking of the End of the Universe conference, which is in Lelystad, uh, which is half an hour away by train from Amsterdam. Um, basically, we're here because like, most of the people here have got the same interest, which is uh, computer hacking and phone freaking, telecommunications, you know, that type of thing. The priority of a hacker or freaker is his equipment anyway. I mean, the fact that we're in a tent and <laughs> we have to walk a few hundred yards to go to the toilet doesn't seem to bother anybody. A hacker or freaker really doesn't really care where he is. I mean, if he's sleeping in a tent or sleeping in a four-star hotel. But his main enjoyment is his, is his computing or his freaking, perhaps. That, I mean, that's what he lives for. It's a... It's a lot, lot of people, lot of uh, very different people. I see here families with uh, babies, I see here uh, little kids uh, who know nothing about computers but uh, are interested in uh, ripping off com phone companies so they come here, maybe they'll learn the trick. Yeah, you see lots of things. There are some very, very good people there, some real hardcore, sort of old type technologists. So my name's Manuel Goldstein, I'm the editor of 2600 Magazine, the Hacker Quarterly. Uh, we publish a hacking magazine out of the United States. We've been doing it since 1984. Uh, we started out small and it's getting kind of out of control right now. We deal with like astral things, you know, bits going through wires or whatever, and we talk to people who are only a name, you know, fiber optic. We heard him on the phone. I don't know how he looks like. Is fiber optic on the line? Yes, he is. Ah, there he is. I saw Emmanuel Goldstein here, you know, sort of, this was something, you know, like, now he has a face, you know, so he exists. Oh, this event is great because it brings people from all over the world together. Um, we had one once before in 1989 called the Galactic Hacker Party. Uh, it's the only other time people from all over the world have congregated to share information about their various countries and cultures. And uh, there's a tremendous interest. I hope to see something like this in the States one day. There's a big hacking scene in Holland. And it's more on a political level. And uh, it's infiltrated into the squatting scene because people want to use high levels of, of knowledge, you know, technology, it's a good one to penetrate. And yeah, if you're gonna, if you're gonna challenge the law, where better to start than in computers, you know, because that's the biggest control. Uh, the people that come here generally tend to be people that are real hackers, that are the leaders as far as understanding the technologies that exist today, whether it be computer technology, telephone switching, uh, or anything else that's being developed. There's, there's so many things happening. This is the whole, our computers are lined up there, uh, connected to the internet. Dude will, will tell you what the, net, what the internet is. 
Okay, uh, well basically the internet is just uh, a big network. Uh, we have workshops on uh, playing with uh, phones, phone freaking we call it. Hi, you can leave a message for John Griesemer when you hear the tone. You may start your message now. Hi John, uh, I can't talk now. I'm in a room full of people, sorry. <laughs> Locksmiths are better. <laughs> There's uh, one on lock picking, which is uh, trying to open locks without harming them. No, it's open. Yeah, you see, it's open. I can move it. Sorry. <laughs> it's boys with toys, definitely. I spent most of the time at the bar talking with. Uh, other, other hackers, other freakers, met the guys from, from the UK, There's some more of those people here. Um, spoke to some journalists as well. And uh, went on the terminals on some of the machines. Generally had a really good time. All this, you know, in nature and uh, all the famous Dutch uh, pleasures. <laughs> I don't know, maybe you should cut this one out too. <laughs> Some of the people, obviously, some of the people I'm with, you know, they find that that's good, you know, about Amsterdam. That's one of the main reasons they've come over. <laughs> Last night, I got absolutely obliterated on a different planet. Eventually, you get into one particular frame of mind, not not two. Like there, there is no difference really between hacking and and for, for myself, the outside world. I mean, I've, I view the world in, in the same respect, that I look for holes basically in everything. Not, because, not out of spite, but because it's my interest. The most sinister hole which, 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 which has been found is uh, credit card fraud, which has got to be the most simple way of earning thousands of pounds a day with absolutely no risk of being caught. I mean, it's quite easily possible, but um, not everybody knows about it, obviously. Otherwise, well, everybody would out, be out there doing it. With credit cards, uh... Obviously, you obtain them uh, via the trashing method, which is popping around the back. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but that information is not available. Not available. Once uh, you've obtained those, you just note down the details. That I... information is not available. Not available. From there, you can uh, do several things. You could phone up a mail order company and order yourself a new... So sorry. Uh, you could order yourself a new... No, no, not available. You can order yourself anything, basically. Um, you can use them to place long-distance calls. You can order yourself food. Um, you know, the possibilities are endless. Carlos. Hi, I'd like to order a pizza, please. Pick up or delivery? Uh, delivery. It's Queensborough Road, the United Kingdom. Excuse me? You do deliver. Yeah. You get a the information is not available. You then ring up the company, say, I want this, that and that, give them the credit card details, yeah? As long as your drop site's in the same vicinity... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Right, it'll turn up. I had a time what, um, uh, me and Hacker Number One called Christmas. It was like, uh an extremely uh, hectic carding session in two days. Yeah, like we spent one whole day ordering it. You know, non-stop, got through about something like 30 or 40 credit card numbers with about average of 500 pound on them each. But, uh, you always get like a slight buzz when you walk out to the van as well, because you never know where the police are going to jump out and get. It takes a matter of three minutes, 15 seconds to order a thousand pounds off a credit card. Um, they're not secure. Don't let them tell you they are. If I were you, I wouldn't get one. I'm not interested in uh, financial institutions. Uh, I mean, if I wanted to rip off, <laughs> rip off banks, I mean, I, I'd be doing it now. But uh, it, it doesn't interest me. I'll end up in a life of crime, but not like blue-collar crime. Uh, I can't really see myself giving up hacking or freaking within the near future. And uh, even if uh, the feds get hold of you, yeah, it still ain't gonna stop you. I think I'll only get fed up with it after I get busted every day on a regular basis. Even though it's criminal, I mean, we're not doing any harm. I mean, pe people will see, uh, 
at the moment seem to go to prison for six months for raping somebody. If we were caught hacking, I'm sure we'd go down for at least a couple of years. Moshi moshi, genki desu ka? If you really wanted to get at somebody or some institution, to be honest, there's no way they could stop you. You could, you could do it. If you were determined enough, you would get in. I mean, if you wanted to trash their, their latest system or, or, or whatever, you, you could do it. There's, a, there's no reason why you couldn't. In, in a way, it's like the ultimate terrorism.